Good morning everyone. Um, this is the first of what will be a series of videos that I'm going to uh, use to try out different techniques and show you some tricks um, in the art studio. So I'm actually in my own art studio at the moment. Um, uh, there's, there's two rooms here and um, I'm going to do a little tour briefly and uh, just to give you an idea of the, the kind of layout. It is a working studio so it might be a little bit messy at times um, but it's very much part of the art experience. So if you want to watch along, I'm going to do um, different things um, every week. I'm going to take requests from you from the class. Uh, so if there's anything in particular you'd like me to demonstrate, I will be demonstrating that. So for the moment, I'm going to do a quick tour and give you some idea of the things that are here that if you want to ask more questions about, if you want me to show you how I did those things, uh, I can do that for you. So um, this will cut now to uh, the next part of the video. I'm just going to do a little bit of a tour. So my studio is based in the lovely uh, historical quarter of Millmount in Drogheda. Um, I have some lamps set up here just to create some even light for you guys. Uh, there's a large glass table here. Um, and you can imagine I will be going through, I have, these are actually old school presses um, from a, a, a kind of a salvage job, typical art, arty type thing. But there's always tons of materials here um, from painting uh, materials. And these are prints on the wall, there are etchings, and this press is full of all the equipment for etching. Um, and then more kind of miscellaneous equipment I've got over here. Um, kind of always have a mix of random things. These may be the, the biggest colouring pencils you've ever seen as well. They're fantastic. They're also water soluble, which means you can uh, really lash on a really thick level of a uh, um, uh, pencil and then use it to paint. These are kind of storage areas for paintings and canvases. You can see this canvas here. It's not far off the size of me. So there we go, it's 150 centimeters high. Um, very quickly, just I'm gonna go into the other room as well. You can kind of get an idea of what's going on in here. Um, there's other artisans in the area here as well. There are uh, ceramic artists, jewelers, knitwear designers, all kinds of things. Um, so there's lots of different things in here. You guys will remember how I showed you how that painting went and it was a little bit more difficult. But then there's other paintings like these guys, which are a little bit more abstract. Um, there's lots of paintings. Things are forever going into storage. Uh, that's just a necessary part of it. I have a little library here. Again, more materials, boxes of, um, these are oil paints, more oil paints. Um, there's gouache inks different types of tapes here. Uh, I'll go around the other side actually, it might give you a better idea as to the different, uh, just constantly collecting books on artists. Um, that's, that's just part of being uh, an artist, I suppose. These are all sketchbooks. I'm gonna be going through those later on today as well to show you that the research techniques I'm forever banging on about with you guys is something I do as well. Um, boxes full of charcoal here, boxes full of markers, again some more miscellaneous items. Um, these are types of inks that are used with natural materials. But um, basically you get the idea. Um, that's give you some idea of what a working studio might look like. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the different colours I'm using. Uh, this is very important and um, will be very helpful as we go along. Now, I have a lot of white here uh, for good reason. Um, you're going to use white quite often in this mix. Um, some of you have even told me you're running out of white at home. Now, another thing I would point out, I'm not sponsored, but these Amsterdam acrylic paints, you can buy them in Ireland now, um, you couldn't get them a few years ago. They're really excellent, uh, and they're actually really good value. Uh, these 500 mil tubs, I find, are probably the best value. If you see yourself painting in the future, 
this would be an excellent brand to invest in. Um, now, I always have lots of white uh, paint knocking around. I have another, another few tubs of this. It, it, it gets used quickly and uh, for obvious, you can see why. Now, um, that colour I was saying earlier on, um, what we will have here is yellow ochre. Again, super popular colour. That's the colour I often talk about um, in class as if it's vanilla. Um, I'm just going to just zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm talking about as well. Okay, this is the burnt umber. Uh, burnt umber, um, not the most common colour used, but very efficient, very effective. Um, we've got some processed cyan here, uh, so cerulean blue, uh, we've cadmium red, and we've light cadmium red, which is this guy here, it's kind of orangey. Uh, carmine, it's like a blood colour, it's a lovely colour. And we have some raw sienna, uh, which is actually very close to that yellow ochre. Um, lemon yellow, brilliant colour to use and cadmium yellow as well. Now, I'm gonna mix these in different ways. Um, so when, uh, so I'm gonna mix these up, show you what kind of colors we end up with, and what we'll hopefully end up with is about seven different colors, uh, a, a large batch of kind of general skin color. Now, the skin color I'm working off will be my skin color, because I'm the cheapest model I'll ever have. Um, I'm gonna match it up here very easily. Now. Absolutely, you can change up the skin color and people will have different skin colors. So, think about makeup counters. Think about how you can match colors to your skin. You can even paint a little bit on your skin. Just make sure you're not uh, allergic to um, the, the plastic with the acrylic. Um, but if you can, match it up or get it as close to. A photograph is a great way of doing it too. If you print off a photograph, uh, matching a photographic color that's a brilliant way to do it. But basically, you're gonna use versions of these kinds of colors. Now, I'm gonna mix them up slightly to make slightly different colors. Uh, normally, I do this with oil paint, um, but we're, we're gonna work with acrylic today and kind of show you how you can build up a, a series of colors that you can use on your palette. Okay, so I've mixed up some of the colors here. Uh, and just to give you an idea of how I mix them up, first of all, palette knives. So you might have some plastic palette knives at home, are fine. Uh, I'd recommend, I would recommend investing in a few metal ones, um, especially of a decent brand, a decent standard. Uh, uh, if you treat them well, they will last you a long time, um, and they are worth the investment. Now, uh, I'm just after finishing up mixing uh, the kind of general skin tone that I'll be using for this demonstration. Now, you'll always need a lot more of that than the other colors. Uh, the others are basically for mixing for different tones and different parts. Um, I'm going to use my hand uh, for a very brief demo in, in, in a few minutes, but just to show you how I mixed up these colors, uh, obviously using the palette knife. Now, this color here was made using a uh, light cadmium red, Cadmium red itself, yellow ochre, and lots of white. If you can imagine mixing up a kind of a seafood sauce with mayonnaise and Tabasco sauce and ketchup and all those types of things, that's basically what you're going for. Now, when you're mixing, you see these streaks? We don't want those streaks in there. So you want to keep mixing until those streaks are gone, okay? It's quite nice to do. It can be a little bit time consuming. Now, I strongly recommend you avoid mixing on paper because it will dry out on the paper. Now, I'm using a large flat surface of glass with um, white underneath it. The white underneath this will stop a kind of ref reflection of other colors. So I'm also using a lot of, the room here is white, uh, so there's a limited amount of other colors bouncing around impacting the color. So I'm left with this fleshy color um, as a base tone, if you can see there. You can see it's considerably brighter than my hand at the moment, but it, this is a base. I'm gonna be adding to this and subtracting, uh, adding in these tones. Now, just to quickly run through these tones, um, don't wanna waste any paint. And for rags, old t-shirts are great just 
old ones that are going in the bin, you can chop them up and then when they're used, yeah, you actually get quite a bit of use out of them. Um, so this color here is a combination of white, cadmium yellow and lemon yellow. This is just white and lemon yellow. Uh, this is the cerulean blue with um, the cadmium red. This is alzerian red. Uh, sorry, that's the carmine, the, the kind of blood red color mixed with some raw sienna. And then this guy is uh, the cyan blue with a touch of cerulean blue and some of the cadmium red. So that's how they're mixed up. I'm gonna mix these a little bit more. Um, if you keep a little bit of uh, water nearby, you can drop a little bit of water onto these and keep them active. If you let them uh, sit like this for a while, they will dry out pretty swiftly. So bear that in mind. So working quite fast now, um, what I'm going to shoot, I'm actually just using a little white plate as a palette, um, you can use any sort of surface really, uh, but something um, that's not porous, so a ceramic plate, a plastic um, container, like even the paint trays that you might have at home, they can be ideal for this, and it, it, they're also very lightweight um, and it, they can hold a lot of paint. Um, very effective, I've used them quite a few times over the years. Uh, now, I'm going to place it down though, because in your case, you should be working off an image, you should be set up on a table somewhere, whatever you might be, but just for this demonstration, uh, I've got a few brushes here, you can see they're not super detailed. Um, now, good brushes are important, and I would recommend getting uh, some decent brushes um, to hand. Uh, I'm going to start with this bigger one, just to get it started. It's a large round head, um, and I'm just going to give you the idea now of what should be happening. Now, I'm gonna be turning back here quite a bit. Uh, I'm gonna use the traditional, I've done these demos before in class. Let's turn that a little bit. Um, I'm gonna start with the white, actually. I'll get the water a little bit closer there. Um, it's gonna, a little bit of water, a little bit of the white. And I'm thinking, just at the moment, the raised areas. So I'm just trying to identify what's raised. Now, you're probably not gonna see a whole lot on the camera there, uh, but I can just about see what's happening, and it also gives me an idea of how to get started. Okay, now, I'm gonna go into that flesh color, that general kind of flesh tone that will make more sense uh, of what's happening. Now, I'm not gonna paint the whole hand, uh, and I'm gonna get a little section of it done, just so you can see how quickly this can be achieved and how, you know, you know, not to get in a big tizzy about things. Um, it doesn't have to be super difficult, people, you know. When you know how, of course. Okay, that should be a little more angled there. You can see already there, some things happening. Uh, now, I'm gonna pop this brush away for a moment. I'm gonna move on to a flat head. Uh, Fly heads are, it's a little bit easier to control them. Uh, I already can see, now I can already see some of the things that are happening here. So I'm gonna again try and capture some of these tones. You're trying to identify what's dark, what's light, even the shadows in the background here. I'm gonna look at that shadow in the background and I'm kind of thinking along these lines. Just, that will just keep me on point. That shadow will actually bleed into the hand a little bit. Okay, nothing too mega detailed going on yet. That's gonna get calmed down in a little bit. So, just trying to capture some of those shadows on this side of the painting. I'm gonna focus more so on this area, just because there's, a, there's probably enough going on just in terms of for this demonstration. And again, some of that's gonna end up blending into the hand. I'm gonna go, now this is wet on wet, the brush is still wet, and I'm gonna mix some of that color there already, some of that kind of purpley hue, adding into the hand, okay. The thumb starts to get fleshed out a little bit. Now, much darker there, again. 
You know, I'm, this is very much wet on wet. It, 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 it's rewarded for doing things fast. Now you don't have to do things fast. Just for these kind of demonstrations, it's just to quickly get you through those areas. Now, again, that darker area here and around the finger. Again, that shadow behind. Maybe if you wanted to make that shadow a little bit bluer, you could, that's fine. Whatever you'd like to do on that front. Okay. I'm going to bring in some, some of these yellows, bring some of the heat back in. It's just trusting what's there, not, not what you think is there, but what is there, what you're seeing. That's okay if those colours kind of blending a little bit. It's kind of nice. A bit more interesting. Mm. Continuing with some heat. Especially in around these fingernails. A little more red. It's what you see. It's what you see. I'm going to push them back down a little bit as we go along. A little bit on this one. So what I should have is from kind of start to finish really rudimentary and then a little bit more finished as we get this direction. Okay. And don't worry if you overpaint something. We can tidy that up later. And I know I look like I have a bloody finger here but you know we'll fix that later. It's no problem. Okay. Now, back to the flesh, back to the pinky flesh tone. Um, I'll use that now. I'm um, kind of think of the direction. Like, your fingers aren't flat, they are rounded. You know, they can be a little bit more sausage like in my case. And your style of painting, if you if it's more impasto or you know, think Van Gogh and all these famous painters that have come before, if you want to paint like that, you go ahead. It's how you interpret things. You can kind of see how some of the colours are st starting to blend now more and more naturally. They're being calmed down a little bit. And I quite like that kind of curvy painting today, especially for this demonstration. You know, it kind of even reminds me of oil pastel work. I'm going to let that dry up a little bit up there. So I want to come back to it. You kind of overpaint this action. Okay. So I think this should start showing itself to us a little bit more. Well, that finger's clearly too long. I'm going to put some white, just raw white, mix it in there. You kind of see some of those natural blues and stuff are just starting to shine through in the paint. I'm just coming in, back in a little bit more white. I'm kind of looking at the raised parts of my hand now, trying to emulate some of those sections. I need to avoid this finger because it's still a little bit muddy, still a little bit wet. I need to just relax, leave it alone. Don't burden yourself sometimes by feeling, oh, I have to do that now. Just give it a chance. And the nails, you'll probably have in your head that nails are. Oh, that's, that's much wider, but it depends on where it is. Okay.
Just calm things down. This is never going to be full realistic to do a, a 10 minute demonstration, but I think you'll, you'll get the idea and I think you'll understand that there's a lot more going on here and that you can, you can kind of see that little, adding a little bit of movement to your painting can do an awful lot. Um, yeah, okay, we're getting there. Now, another trick uh, is to try and keep your position still. So where are your painting from? Keep the light as even as possible, as consistent as possible. Um, in my case, I'm trying to keep the, the, the hand here, but every time I move, the light changes in the sense that the, I'll see the hand in a different perspective. So one of the tricks is, of painting is to try and, you should try and stay in the same place. So obviously, I haven't been adhering to that too strictly, but nonetheless, you can see why I hope that's an important factor. I'm just going to use some of those shadows now to sharpen up. I'm going to head into the final part of this now just to try and get it finished up a little bit. So you can kind of see some semblance of finish. So these are the shadows that have been cast from our lamps. And they're not perfectly straight, they're kind of they have a soft edge. Light has kind of soft edges. It's not as harsh as people think it is. When you really look at it, it's quite soft and gentle. Dark tone again. I'm happy enough with that. From my perspective, the shadow here. It softens around that area there. A little bit of white into the shadow, just to calm it down. I want it kind of darker in towards that area there. Where the shadows intersect and we end up with a small patch of much darker shadow in there where they intersect. Okay. And same on this side. A bit darker. And you can see those outside areas really important to create the illusion on the inside area. Hopefully, I'll give you an idea when you are overworking things and trying too hard. Well, try and deal with those nails. Now, I should move over to a smaller brush, but I'm just going to show just quickly. You know, you'd still be surprised what a bigger brush can do in terms of detail. I'm just going to bring up a few highlights here and there. Now, if I was spending more time on this, I'd probably have a little bit more blue in, in, in the skin tone here and there. But I think this will make the point as it stands. I'm still working on wet. Now, this is one more trick I'm gonna show you is, this is called dry brushing. So there's not a lot of paint on here. And what you can do is just brush a little bit of paint off the brush. So a little bit of white, I'm just gonna brush it off so there's not a huge amount, there's very little paint on the brush. And I know I've moved, but just for the sake of argument, if I want to go into this area here, it will pull up, if you're just pulling across the painting, it will just pull up on the raised surfaces. 
So that can be quite a nice effect to add a bit of life into a painting. So hopefully this will give you a quick idea on how you can paint from, in this case, left to right, quite simple, and how it builds up using those colours and how they'll naturally blend together. Now, maybe I'll do one last thing, and that's uh, use a palette knife very quickly, add in some final details uh, in and around the knuckles and maybe, maybe just a few other areas here and there. Just to carve in some extra little details, just because again, showing you another tool that you have at your disposal, and it will still read for the viewer. Now, if you don't like something, you can go in with your finger and even fix it up there like that. Um, I think I'm happy enough with that. Let's calm those things down. Uh, famously, William Turner, a great English painter, would make a lot of his paintings and involve his finger in the work. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that gives you an idea on how you can improve your skin tone work and how something as simple as a little plate and a few basic brushes with the right colour mixing can really help you with your paintwork. And then uh, hopefully you'll have some more suggestions for the next class um, and I'll get them to you in the future. See you later folks.